hi everyone and welcome back so in this video we are going to talk about authentication service and i thought of putting some more content as a prerequisite to understand the basic authentication mechanism before we even, we even start writing the authentication service in next years okay so authentication is easy process like you enter the username email password or whatever the mobile number or something and you get a either OTP on the mobile number or if you talk about the more secured system you enter email ID password and if there is a two-factor authentication enabled then you have to enter the code from the token generator application like uh, Google Vault application if you have installed on your phone you have to enter that token so that is enterprise authentication mechanism where you enter email ID password and then you have to enter the token like in the github also if you enable the two-factor authentication github aws they provide you this kind of mechanism okay we are not going to build that kind of system but we are going to build the more secure system so in this we are going to talk about two different mechanisms to build the authentication service like we can use cookies based auth uh, user session or we can talk about jwt or you can say token based user session and we'll talk about one by one what all these are and which one you should prefer that that is based on your uh, convenience like how you want to manage the user session at the server side and the client side okay cookies are like some small piece of data which you store uh, which you return from the server side and then client keeps sending that cookies piece of data key value pair of data to the server token is just like uh, some token generated by server and then that token you keep passing from the client to the server okay so what we are going to do is let's try to understand these both the system i mean there are many different things which we might or you might not be aware so i was thinking to cover it so this is the client and this is our server so what will happen is you will enter the email id and password what it will do is it will validate it against the database that you have entered the the correct credentials which are which looks correct and then what it will do is it will return a cookies it will re it will set a cookies and it will return a cookie in the response so here it is what it is doing is it is returning the cookies and your cookies can be anything something like this okay what is this cookie information contains it can be a key value pair it can be a session id now to make it more secure we are not going to put user information inside the cookies or email or something what we will do is in database to make it secure like uh, we can have two different tables one is a user table which you already have here like user it's not database it's just a user table and here we are going to maintain another session table you can say what we are going to do is once the email id password credentials are correct we are going to generate a session inside a table okay we will generate a session we will just return a session id we will return a session id to the server and that session id you can store inside you can put the inside the cookies and send that session id to the client now client knows all these key value pair so to make it make the cookies secure obviously you you have to set all these parameters secure http only uh, you have to set the cookie for a particular domain you have to set the expiry of the domain expiry of the cookie all these things you must always set for the cookies so to, to prevent accesses attack or csrf attack because cookies is if it is not secured anybody can decode your cookies but even if anybody's try to decode the cookies he should not be able to get anything more than session id okay so you should put minimal information here we are putting the session id which is not having a user information so in the session table you create a new record okay this is the active user session i am returning a new session id representing this user record and you will return that cookies to the client side now whenever the client sends a request 
to the server okay i need a uh, user information or whatever what you will do is automatically because you set the cookie to this domain so it will send this same piece of cookies again i mean you don't need to set you don't need to do anything if the cookies has not expired and it is set for the domain automatically all subsequent request will send this cookies back to the server now server has, has cookies you will write a middleware which will check okay is this cookie valid here you are you are going to write some middleware if the cookies has session id if this is not expired then you will validate the session id against this table okay okay i have the session id do you have a active user available for this particular session id and the, is this session id still active because maybe a user has already logged out and you are trying to use the session id which is uh, which you steal somehow from the user and trying to use it okay in that case there is no session exist in the table and it won't allow you to read the data because once you do the logout let's say i am doing a logout from here what i will do is i will send a request to the server do the logout and this is my session id it will delete the record from this session table okay i want to delete the current active session of this user delete this session id so if anybody try to use the session id if there is no record in the session table and he won't be able to access anything so we are kind of a secure here this is cookies based authentication right here you are sending setting the things inside a cookies now you can set anything you can say set a, some kind of a token some kind of a session id the advantage is from the client side you don't need to uh, send it to the server automatically if you are setting it to the domain client will always send these cookies back to the server and you can set the if whatever the cookies you are setting for the domain wildcard domain all the cookies will also be set to the subdomains so in uh, domain subdomain kind of application cookies works okay now what are the pros and cons it's always like uh, a security issue because it's uh, stateful we are storing the state of a user we are storing the state of the session in the table and every time we are deleting the session once user is getting logged out some somewhat it is cleaner way of deleting the session but still it is session based we are storing the user session once user is getting logged in but uh, when it comes to the security cookies are not secured because at client side they ha you have access to the cookies and if you are not setting the cookies properly somebody can steal your session id and can try to use it okay but if you are using all these parameters http only secure and you are setting the cookies for domain have a particular expiry don't make the cookies last longer just put some expiry then we should be good but we should also explore other options so what we are going to do is i will just copy this setup we will talk about uh, this looks like I didn't copy the whole thing maybe I can draw something again sorry for that so let's move this little down here let's talk about okay I'm good I wanted to use the token based authentication which is stateless and people call it as a stateless why because here server is responsible for validating the user for the first time like the, you are sending a request from the client to server okay this is the login request so what server will do is this is server which is pretty much clear this is your client app. you will send a request username password or whatever the authentication you will check those credential against the database and what you will do is you will return a cookies from the server side so you will just write some kind of a JWTJSON web token you will validate the user username password is correct you will sign you will create a token with some secret with algorithm private cure whatever and you will return a token so this token you are actually returning from server side so there are two objectives of a server here server is generating a token and validating the token 
so this is user database you validate the device password with the string password and everything is good so it will just return a token to the in the response of the login request now what you can do is in the subsequent request you have to send this token some somehow or like you can just use authorization header in authorization you can send a bearer token this token value okay now what server will do server will validate now if this token is valid or not because you set an expiry to the token you are setting an expiry to the token here which should not be more than minutes like 15 minutes 20 minutes to make it secure server will validate the token if token is valid okay i will allow you to read the further request and you can just go and maybe okay i need a user details profile detail account details some more tables you will be able to access through the apis but what you are sending is you are sending an authorization header which you need to set from the client side it won't automatically get set at the client side the token you are sending you have to store it so what we need to do is we need to store it at the browser level so we have to store it either in the local storage or you can set it in the cookies you can set it in the session storage all these places you have to set the token which has been written and now you need to write interceptors and all at the client side code whatever the exos or patch call you are making set the authorization uh, header and send the token into with that so it's like an exos or some request you are making and sending the authorization request to the server server will validate the authorization header which contains the access token like jwt token if valid allow him to use it now why it is stateless because we haven't stored any uh, session anywhere of the user what we did is okay user credentials are correct just generate a token and send it to client now client will just subsequent request client will use that token and will send it to the server server will validate but here you see the token is still valid even if you send a logout request from here I send a logout request let's say here what the logout will do logout will do nothing logout will just say okay you are logout uh, logout will not invalidate the existing tokens so always keep the uh, expiry of the token minimal like 15 minutes will be fine so logout will just through the logout what you can do at the client side remove the token from the session storage cookies local storage or whatever so that in subsequent request the client should not be able to send the access token and server knows okay you are not sending i won't permit you or if you try to send expired token then also it will block it but it is purely stateless server has generated a token now the token is valid for next 15 minutes you can't do anything but I mean I built a systems where I managed it I uh, I actually moved it from stateless to stateful because what we want there is a particular feature with the current setup you can log in the application from n different systems okay like this is the same client with same username password you can send it the request again to the server and what will happen is you get the access token here also similarly if i have another client with the same username password you can actually generate a token and start using the application but in like when you want to enforce that even if you are using token based authentication you wanted to force that only one system can use the active session at a time then you have to store the session somewhere like okay this is the active user and i will be putting things inside a redis I mean there are rare requirements of something like this so if user logs in what you will do is you will store the active session in the redis okay and before once the you are trying to log in from another device or another tab or another browser with uh, again using login what will happen is you will invalidate the session here and every time whenever there is a request coming with the token every time you will also check the with this token payload the token which you have generated does you have do you have active session in the redis okay 
let let me explain it like this okay for uh, first client okay this is like okay uh, person e is sending a request and then person b sending a request he is sending a username password validate and you will return a token in redis i will create a session for the user a with email id and token that's good now user b with the same credential is trying to log in then i will check okay the, with the same credential there is already active session in the redis i will delete the session and i will regenerate a new session with the another user with the same credential i mean uh, it might have just some uh, parameter because now the new token has been generated and the old token has been invalidated invalidated from the redis and every time whenever there is a subsequent request is coming you all also validate things from the redis so in the redis if uh, that token has been invalidated that means you won't allow him so it's like a, you are forcing a stateless mechanism and making it as a stateful which is not a good practice but this token based authentication either you use auth zero or any other provider it works purely stateless but we are going to use the stateless one which uh, we discussed here this is the stateless uh, mechanism we don't have multiple clients in this requirement you can log in from n different devices and it will give you n different tokens if you log in again and again like let's say if you are using different browser incognito or different devices every time with the same credentials you can get a new G gwt token to make it secure what you can do is if, let's say if somebody steals the token obviously he can access your apis so it's better that always uh, i mean people used to store it in the local storage you can uh, put it in the cookies but that's also not secure so the other the only way is just to make it uh make the expiry of the token less like 10 minutes would be fine and have a refresh token mechanism and all these things do not keep the token longer on the browser so if somebody steals it or somebody has the token and a api endpoint with the authorization header they can access the resource okay now we are going to implement the same thing with the nest.js system uh, so let's do that in the next video